you have really carved your way on your own. And I, and I, I don't mean that like, I'm not, I'm not insulting anybody else, but I've, I've, I've known of you a long time. We've known each other quite a mm-hmm. while. And I've, I, I've just watched you as a person go, you, you haven't had to rely on anyone. Like there's just been Melissa, just kind of like, okay, the drive. And you told me one time, you probably forgot this, but we were talking at one of the deer classics and you just said, you know, I, I got into this. I wanted to hunt for a living and I needed to figure out a way to do it. And it was just like such a simple declaration that was just like, yeah, that makes total sense. And I think that's kind of been the difference in the drive through this whole thing is the authenticity. The only thing I ever wanted to do was hunt every day. I never wanted to have a TV show. I didn't want to be on social media. I didn't want any of those things per se. I just wanted to find a way to hunt every day because that's what I love. And instead, I knew I had to pay a mortgage and and support a family and everything else along the way. So I found ways that I could do well and what I enjoy just as much. I honestly love hunting and filming just as much as just hunting. Um, the camera I don't look at as a hindrance. I look at everything as a positive because I am lucky enough to live the dream I set out to do. It took a long time. It took a ton of free work. And honestly, looking back, I don't know if I'd have the energy to do it again. <laughs> you know, um, there was basically that I was either going to do this or I was going to be an anesthesiologist. And not everybody knows that. But there were times when I looked back and I thought, why didn't I just go to medical school and be an anesthesiologist? It would have been way easier. But I wouldn't have been doing what I love. And I think sometimes that true passion comes through and people see that and they know, you know, I like people. I like hunting. I like I like going to those shows and and talking with people. So I think sometimes that's the most important is whatever you are, whatever it is that you really want that authenticity shows through. And if it's maybe you like the social media more than hunting, no big deal. Then do that and do it well. Um, But I think where people get into a little bit of trouble is when they're trying to go for something that's really maybe not their thing. I mean, it can be hard in the beginning because some people don't know. Well, no. And what they don't know is those struggle years. Like they they just look at you or they look at Lee, Lee and Tiffany or somebody and they go, oh, they're okay, they're famous. They made a ton of money off the industry, whatever, but they don't know the internships. <laughs> they don't know the hours in the editing suite. And that's, that's one thing, you know, we've had Tom Miranda on here and, you know, I've known Tom a long time. And if you looked at his life, you'd go, oh man, this guy's living a dream. He's also back when I used to do a lot of work with him, that dude was up at three 30 every morning and he Still was, is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Working his ass off. And you don't see that part. You see the, the, you know, polish show, you see the appearances and you don't see all of the behind the scenes stuff. And that's maybe, maybe the best lesson of the conversation between you and I is people don't, they think that there's like a shortcut to this and there isn't like, there's just no way around. You have to have something to offer and you're going to give yourself away for a long time to get anywhere. And you have to be willing to work harder than everybody else. Because I've always said I may not have been more talented than anybody else out there. I'm not a better hunter than anybody else. But what I can do is I'll work anybody else. That's the only thing I felt I could control. And, of course, luck is on your side sometimes. But you're only lucky because you spent 100 days in a row out deer hunting and it finally yeah. works out. You know, um, so I think sometimes you're right. There's nothing, nothing more true than there's not really a shortcut way to achieve it. You just have to put in that time and it's kind of like a pyramid. You got to really build a strong base and keep going. Otherwise it can all fall apart very quickly and you appreciate it. You know, I mean, I wouldn't do anything in my power to ever give this up because I've worked so hard and put so much time and dedication. You miss every family event. I mean, for eight years, I did nothing except for work. Um, poor pork chop got to join in on the end of that. Now, you know, now things are a little bit better because you learn to be a little more efficient and you learn the the things to do when you have a family and you want to be around more, but it's a challenge. You couldn't have done that in year one. Yep. Yeah. It, it's just a, it's just a process. It just takes time and you have to, you, you know, I, I say this all the time because people ask me like, how do I become a writer? And they always approach it. Like I want to kind of play at it. And I'm like, well, you, you just can't, you can't play it. Like, this isn't miniature golf. Like, this is my career. Like, you either, you either do it or you don't. And, you know, some people kind of can dip a toe in the water and they, but they don't need it for their job. And there's a different, like, if you're, if you're reaching out and you're like, I want to do that, I'm like, okay. Like, or I want to be, I want to have my own hunting show. Okay. Like, watch out because reality is going to kick you square in the delicates like 5,000 times, you know, and that's, you know, you mentioned luck and I, I love this. 
I've had this happen so many times to me where people will be like, oh, you had another lucky year. And I'm like, you're only giving me credit for the good luck. <laughs> like it, n- <laughs> nobody's sitting there giving Melissa Bachman credit for the bad luck. And, you know, part of, of doing my job is making it look easy, right? Yeah. Um, my whole goal is not to make it look like a grind or to show the times. I mean, I can't tell you the number of times I've texted Michelle, my PR person, and said, you know, I should just post this right now so people see what this is really like. And But you don't because that's not part of it. And, you know, you, you want to do that and you want to create that luck by being in the field and being out there. And sometimes things go your way. Some things they don't over and over and over, but it's not getting upset about it. And it's just sticking with it. And and eventually it'll work out. You you, you just got to be confident. So on that note, do you feel, you know, a different, you know, you're so established now and you're just so good at what you do. Do you feel a difference in pressure now? Like as far as, you know, going on a hunt, having to kill or having to prove yourself or get the footage or anything, like, do you just feel more confident now or how has that changed for you? No, not really. Um, (laughs) It's still there. The differences I've learned is you can get yourself as worked up as you want. It's not going to change the outcome. The only thing getting worked up will do is possibly hinder your chances, right? So I'm still like anyone else. At any moment, my career could be over. Okay. I could be irrelevant and I'm gone. So I feel like you're constantly working just as hard to just stay where you're at or or try to keep improving. You're always trying to improve. But I've learned that I can get all upset and wonder, oh, why is this not working? Just chill out. It'll either work or it won't. I always say that. And it it is so true. And and I can't tell you how many times it's worked out on the last day or the last minute of the last day. And guess what? Sometimes it just doesn't work out. So then you try to figure out, can we make something of it if it doesn't? Or do I have other hunts that were really successful that we could combine this with? Mm -hmm. Um, You try to get creative and make the best of it. But in the end, you can't control it. So the things I can't control, I'm not going to worry about. Now, if I'm just not getting out of bed and not hunting, no, that's a problem. (laughs) Um, But that's not the type of things that are the issue. It's it's things out of your control usually. Yeah. Well, that's the... That's a hard thing to get people who aren't in the industry to understand is your job and your paychecks are dependent on the wild and mother nature and man, it's just like, there's so many things, like you said, that are just out of your control. Just Mm -hmm. like one cold front comes in, changes everything or one warm front or five days of rain or seven days of rain or the roads get shut down because of the snow or the animals aren't moving. And it's just an endless possibility of things that can conspire against you. And nobody will tell you that more than a a bank when you're trying to get a loan. (laughs) I can promise you that much Um, because your business, it it could change at any moment. You know, you're literally on a year by year basis. So you're constantly working so hard to maintain and to do better that it's not like a steady paycheck that's always coming in. If you don't do your part and you don't prove your worth, tomorrow you can be gone. Um, So you really, it's just a constant um, trying to just keep relevant and and stay with it. And you always, always got to be outworking everybody else because otherwise there's going to be someone younger that had the energy I had when I started that's coming in and willing to do it for less or do it for free. So you really got to prove that what you're doing is worth it. Yeah. Well, and and hopefully that. The, the doing it for less part is, is a weird one because there is, you know, the, the money we, we've seen high years, we've seen low years in the outdoor industry. We're definitely not at a high spot right now, I wouldn't say. And there are a lot of people willing to give away their work for free. Mm-hmm. And some companies will take that. You know, you see that in, in obviously in videography, you see it in, in photography that just about killed the outdoor photography industry. I, I see it in writing, but you, you kind of still see this equilibrium come if you're producing good content. Like there's still, oh, somebody's still going to come around and say, I appreciate what you're doing and I see it. And so it's like a, like, like your whole lesson is kind of don't focus on the negative and nothing you can do about it. And there's always going to be something positive that comes around if you're, if you're busting your tail. Mm-hmm. Like my cameraman, for example, sometimes people say, wow, you know, you could do it for free or have iPhones or this and that. He is phenomenal at what he's done. He has worked with me for nine years. Um, if I have the money, I am hiring him every single time I can. And sometimes I can't, sometimes the trips are too long and it doesn't make sense. So I do it by myself or, or different things, but there is something to be said for having that, that practice and and being in those instances, because sometimes things come across and 
things are going down fast and you do not want someone who doesn't necessarily have the experience. Um, we can get through stuff that we don't even hardly have to talk because we've been through it so many other times. So there's a lot to it that, you know, makes people stay relevant for a really long time because they're working hard and producing good quality stuff. Yeah. I'm finding good cameramen is not as easy as it sounds. <laughs> I've been very, very, very fortunate. I have, uh, you know, I obviously haven't filmed nearly as much as you, but I've 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 been in front of the camera enough to know how quickly you can decide that you don't like the person sitting over your shoulder in the tree or sneaking behind you, and it's just a uh, it, it's a weird thing when you go with you know you take your kids out and they're making noise and they don't know how to walk through the woods or whatever. Like you're like okay, you know, don't don't scuffle your feet, don't step on every branch, but you go out with a cameraman who doesn't know how to hunt. Or, do, you know, like doesn't have that background. It just feels like, I, I don't know about you, but my, I, I have a hard time controlling my <laughs> emotions. Well, in that I've situation. always said you're only as good as your weakest link, right? So you got to make sure that you, your guide and your cameraman are all on the same page. And I believe a lot of my success has been because we have always been a team. Um, nobody, even if, if I mess up, he's not going to blame me. If he messes up, I'm not going to blame him. We're in it together. And having that unity, I think, is so important because you're right. You start getting frustrated with someone and it, it'll get the best of you in no time. And it is really frustrating. So by making sure that that doesn't happen and that everyone's on the same team and you know what? We are not taking an animal unless we've got the footage, we've got this and this. So there's no there's no one trying to kind of pull you aside because when I was a cameraman, guides would do it all the time. If they could sense that there was something between the hunter and the cameraman, they'd try to pull them, hey, hurry up, just just take the shot. They'll figure it out. No, no, we're one team. And I think that really, that unity is important. And also personalities. I mean, you got to travel with people. You They're a representation of you as well, whether you're in a, a camp or with guides or whoever. Um, you know, I always want to leave the best reputation as possible and who you're with says a lot as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sitting, sitting in a blind all day or sitting in a tree all day with somebody who you don't know, or you don't like very much is not very much fun. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not. Um, so you, you said that you, you really enjoy the filming aspect of it still. <laughs> um, you, you don't, you don't ever just lay down at night and kind of fantasize about going out for three weeks of hunting in a row without having a camera over your shoulder. No. Wow. Honestly, I would, to me, because I think it's so ingrained in me, if I had that and I did that, I would feel so horrible about not getting beautiful footage. Like as I'm watching it play out thinking I could have captured this. And I think a lot of that comes back because one of the main reasons I like having a show now, originally it was so I could hunt and travel and do all that. But I like showing people what they may be haven't had the chance to see or do in their life. I love it when kids see an alligator show and say, I want to hunt alligators, you know, and as a little kid, they would have never thought about that. But because of the video that I brought back, they now love it. So to me, I don't ever, I, if anything, I get frustrated if I have to be the one filming and I think it could have been better if a cameraman or someone else would have been there to really show what that was like to show that experience. So it's kind of crazy because I know people always are saying it, but I think a lot of that goes back to as to I don't feel having a cameraman has ever been a hindrance. Um, again, we're in it together as a team and you either do it right and you do it or you don't do it at all. Yeah. What, what, what do you have in your life then? Do you, I mean, do you have something like fishing with the family or something that you're not, mm -hmm. you're just, it's just your fun outdoor thing together that you're not, it's not your business. Is it fishing? Yeah. We don't film any fishing yeah. stuff. Um, so we go fishing, we do stuff. We shoot behind the house almost every night. We, we have steel targets all through the hills. Um, we do all those kinds of things and I don't really film any of that. Yeah. Um, every once in a while, if I would need some content, maybe I'd get a picture, but that's kind of the things we do to enjoy. And maybe I'll post a picture. Maybe I won't, you know, yeah. of fishing or whatever it is, but, um, I've never had a fishing show. I've done a couple fly fishing shows, um, that were incorporated with a hunt, but other than that, fishing's kind of the thing that we do on our own time. Yeah. So you, you keep something for yourself. Mm -hmm. That's, that's mm -hmm. not, you know, you're, you're not producing around it. Yep. And my whole life. Um, I'm not someone that puts my whole life on social media or any of this stuff. Um, so to me, that's kind of, you get to see the hunting parts of it. And a lot of other things are just behind closed doors and that's the way I like it. 